Hey guys, um, so this video is gonna be all about my VBAG 2 successful and I'm very proud to say it that I did it and let's get started on how it started and what was my decision in the first place. So my first uh, child, let's just um, say that um, uh, I was 40 weeks plus and they, um, I went to doctor's checkup and next thing I know I am being induced uh, with things that I don't know. Uh, my body just rejected it completely and I, um, I was in the hospital for 24 hours. My body was not cooperating and uh, baby's heart rate was going down and um, I, uh, in the morning I was begging for C-section. What's the matter? Hmm. And uh, so that was my first C-section. After the first one, um, I was in, I was in recovery for seven hours. Uh, I didn't see my baby um, for seven hours. I just took a glimpse of in the operating room, and then I was just knocked out uh, from all the drugs. Um, and it was very traumatic for me uh, not to be able to experience the thing that is usually uh, the most amazing thing in your life happening to a woman. Uh, so after I saw my baby, I just didn't. Um, completely connect with her like you would normally do because you were living in a dream bubble and uh, to you everything is not realistic anymore because you you're in an OR, next thing you know there's a baby, then there's no baby and there's the baby again and then they gave it to me and they're like here, wanna breastfeed? I was like I don't know how, would you show me? and they're like no we're not lactation consultants so I was like okay then I'm not gonna, <laughs> I don't know how to so I don't know um, what to do. So she ended up uh, using formula and uh, those formulas were so expensive and she was getting so gassy and cranky and uh, just too much iron in those things, you know. So that's my first C-section story. The uh, second one, um, they, I, I went to Lamas classes, I went to all kinds of classes and I was prepared mentally and physically uh, for natural vaginal birth. Um, but they told me that um, at the ninth month, they told me uh, at the ninth month uh, that uh, we are no, not gonna do it, uh, it's too risky, your uterine might, might rupture, your uterine might rupture, etc, blah blah blah, it's very risky, dangerous, think about your baby and all that stuff that they feel in your head. So um, at that point I couldn't uh, switch providers and I ended up with the elected C-section, um, scheduled C-section with my second daughter, Allison. And uh, she was born at 38 week and 5 days. So uh, they didn't even want to go any further, like 39, 40 weeks, because what's the use? They just want to get it over with. Um, and then um, this time it was a little different, and uh, I knew a couple of things, and I was a little more bossy, and I was uh, telling them um, how I felt the last time and what can they do to fix it. Um, so the nurse was super nice, the one uh, she was with me in the OR. Uh, she put her on my chest right away, and uh, my baby Allison, she was trying to latch on right away. <laughs> and uh, the first thing I screamed was like, she's so pink! So that was that. It was much better experience, but still not the, not the thing that I wanted to experience as a mom. Um, I did fine. I started breastfeeding because I went to classes and I um, <clears throat> they did provide a lactation consultant second time around. And uh, it was very good. I mean, um, recovery was horrible. Of, of course, it's a C-section. It's a major abdominal surgery. Most people don't understand that. <clears throat> My voice. But um, recovery takes a whole lot out of you. Um, you're in pain. You're breastfeeding. All that um, drugs that you take for pain medication. All the pain medication that you're taking, going you know, bloodstream and going to your baby and the milk and. Uh, even though they say it's safe, it's fine, it's still it's drugs. I don't even take uh, Tylenol when I'm pregnant and, uh, you know. Uh, so that was my second C-section. <laughs> and uh, that was all going on in a, a whole different ways. And um, I decided in my mind that I don't want to have no more kids because of the recovery and, uh, you know, horror that I go through every time I'm being cut open and uh, not being able to experience all the love uh, and, you know, beautiful, beautiful uh, experience that women experience when they are giving birth vaginally. So, um, uh, we moved in a new area, a new, um, completely new county, 
and I found out that I'm pregnant and I was devastated because I didn't want another surgery. That's the whole thing that I was in depression for a whole like three months and I didn't know what to do. Well, um, I'm all against miscarriages. I mean, a miscarriage. I'm all against, um, you know, abortions and uh, because I think it's murder. And um, so that said, I, it, I was gonna, you know, keep the baby, of course. <laughs> And uh, I looked for providers and I found a provider that um, they offered me that uh, if I want a vaginal birth that I can have it. And I was surprised and I told them that I will think about it because it was bizarre for me that second time they didn't let me in a different hospital and this time they're offering me uh, VBAG, vaginal birth after cesarean. Cesarean, oh, baby, you're not being nice. And uh, so I said, okay, I'll think about it. So, but I also knew that if I wanted to try for a VBAC, I need a midwife uh, because doctors don't really give you that chance to go further into, uh, you know, in your labor and also when you are overdue or something. But uh, a midwife would be something that I would be comfortable with. And um, so I looked and found a midwife that was awesome. I did a perfect choice. She was very nice, extremely polite and uh, helpful and encouraging. And I also joined the ICANN uh, International uh, Caesarean so S International Caesarean Network. And uh, so they did share their stories, and I did share my stories of C-section. And uh, there were so many traumatized women over there, and. Uh, couple of women they did the uh, successful VBACs and I was very inspired by them they were very empowering and uh, they advocating so nicely like the way they were explaining everything I was like informed so much and my eyes just opened up and I said I can do it I want to do it I want to experience this so um, what happened next so I I went to uh, my midwife it was like 30 35 minutes away from me I was driving by myself and going, it was fun, um, and uh, yeah, so that said, let's get started on my labor and delivery. Um, I never knew that uh, my body can go into labor by itself, and I was always hesitant, but I did read a lot and I did research a lot uh, how and what to do, and I was prepared to try those things, but... <laughs> um, so on the 9th of June, I had diarrhea, sorry, but uh, they said that when you have that, uh, it's kind of like your body's way of saying it needs to be cleared out and um, prepare for birth. So I was like, that's weird, I never have this like three times a day, come on. <laughs> so I just ignored it, I had mild crampings and I did have Braxton Higgs throughout my pregnancy, but it was not major or anything to indicate that I'm in labor. And so I ignored it. The 8th of June, not 9th. And then on the 9th in the morning I woke up with mild cramping and ran, ran to the bathroom. And um, it was weird because um, I found like spotting in the ba in the toilet bowl. Um, and I was like, that's weird. So I went back to sleep. Tried to sleep actually. Um, couldn't sleep with all that um, tightening and cramping going on. and. I decided just to ignore it because I thought it's from the um, diarrhea pain that you have cramps. But it started, it wasn't going away, so uh, it just kept going until like 6 30 in the morning. So that's when I started timing it. I had an app on my iPhone and I started like timing it and then like pressing start and then pressing um, stop. And I found out that it was like 10 minutes apart, lasting like 42 seconds. And I was like, wait a second. This is like early labor or something. It has to be because it's like consistently 10 minutes apart and lasting for 42 seconds and it's like a tightening and cramping at the same time. It cannot just be Braxton Hicks. So um, after that, I uh, just, I was so exhausted. Every time it would hit, hit me with the uh, contraction, I would go crazy because uh, I was in my bed and my husband was sleeping and I didn't want to wake him up. Um, I was hugging the pillow and then going through it and breathing through it, but my breathing was sucked. And um, so I tried to go to sleep. I did uh, eventually succeed to go to sleep. 
<laughs> and after that I woke up again. Uh, I was like around uh, 9 o'clock. I woke up and I uh, went to the bathroom again and got dressed and went downstairs. It was almost like 10 o'clock. I had my breakfast and I, I woke up Melissa. I told my uh, daughter Amy to wake up Melissa and she wasn't waking up and I said, tell her that I'm in labor. <laughs> and she woke up freaking out, Tammy, what? What are, you, what are you saying? You're in labor? I'm like, I think so. <laughs> and she was so excited. And then uh, we went downstairs, we ate breakfast and then after the breakfast, um, I had another contraction and then this time it was different because um, I started feeling some hot liquids dripping down and I was wearing a pad uh, because um, when I saw the bloody spot um, I, was, I just put a pad on and then I was like wait a minute this cannot be urine this cannot be discharged so it's is it amniotic fluid and I was like you know discussing this in my brain I was like trying to figure it out but um, it, it, it turned out it was amniotic fluid um, I had a rupture and it was dripping every time I would have a contraction. I would sit down, it would be okay, but when I was standing, I would stand up, um, it would just trickle. I would sit in a bathroom and it would trickle. Um, so I didn't call my midwife until like evening time. It was like around four o'clock afternoon. Um, and but before that, I went for a walk because. I kind of knew that I'm in labor and I made the video and I put it on YouTube I'm like early labor blah 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 and then I had another one at home um, on the toilet <laughs> sitting on the toilet uh, I'm gonna post that one with the labor uh, footage um, we did try to record as much as possible but um, um, I'll tell you later how it happened so um, at like around six o'clock, five o'clock, I decided to call my midwife and I told her uh, what's going on, and uh, she said that yes, it's your amniotic fluid. There's no other possible thing, and I'm like, is there a way to test it? She's like, there's no question asked that it's your amniotic fluid. If it's not urine, it's not discharged, then you're ruptured, and uh, because you're ruptured, you have to rush things up because uh, baby's water is, you know, going lower. And I was like, okay, so I went for a walk again, and uh, then she said, no, it's not enough. You gotta, um, you gotta do enema. I'm like, no way, because I hate enema. And they did it in the hospital with my first one, it didn't work, and I was like freaking out. <laughs> I was like, no. She's like, Tammy, you have to do enema. If you want to rush things and make your contractions stronger, get this baby out. And I was like, okay, fine. She told me to go and buy the kit and. We couldn't find it in any pharmacy. I sent my family out, they couldn't find it. So I had to go with my contractions to the pharmacy, to pharmacy, and finally found it, found it in Walgreens. Um, we bought it, we came home, now we're deciding who's gonna do it, because obviously I can't do it myself. So my uh, uh, older sister-in-law, she was a brave one to do it. Yay, Celine. <laughs> and uh, yeah, once we did it, my contractions picked up like crazy coming stronger and you know I was like bad um, then it slowed down and I went for another walk and my midwife said yeah take a walk drink lots of fluid go use the bathroom do what you gotta do um, you have to stay active you know gravity 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 stay active in order to for your labor to proceed nicely so I did that and um, uh, sometime around like six seven o'clock it got really bad. I was like yelling at everyone and everybody around me was freaking out and my, my husband was freaking out. He was nowhere to be found because he didn't know how to handle it so he went to the backyard and was sitting there. Um, <sighs> Melissa was next to me the whole time like she was my doula at home and she was awesome. I mean I didn't train her. I didn't teach her anything she was just like naturally knew how to do and what to say and how to massage me and all that stuff I was sitting on a birthing ball but it wasn't doing any justice to me it was just like when the pain comes it's just horrible we went for a walk again um, because walking was so good for me I was less you know stressed and stuff and I was letting my body do what it has to do and in the middle of the contraction we would stop in the middle of the road and I would hug Melissa she would just rub my back and because all my labor pain was in my lower back it's not even lower back it's like on my butt 
um, yeah, all my thighs, my buttocks will get all crazy. And if it wasn't for Melissa, like I would, I would not handle that. Um, it's really like she was awesome. And um, so, like around 9 o'clock, um, my midwife was calling constantly and we were texting constantly like being in touch and she was asking me questions I was answering them and um, sometimes we would call and she's like do you need to do you need to breathe okay go ahead and breathe breathe deep nice and slow and it's like okay so after a couple of uh, breathings my breathing got better and better and better because at first I was like <laughs> I was like I didn't know what to do um, but then you just get practice and practice, practice. That's why they say like practice during your pregnancy so you know how to breathe. But I didn't, uh, so my mistake. Anyway, um, so at like 9.30 we decided to go to the hospital and we did. We packed up and uh, by the time we got there it was like 10 o'clock. So we um, had a contraction at the check-in in the emergency room. <laughs> uh, and I was like, one second. I was breathing. The lady was like, okay, you two go upstairs and your husband can uh, fill out the paperwork. And me and Melissa went upstairs. And my midwife was there. Yay! She was like first to be there. And then I called my doula before and she got in there like within 15 minutes. And uh, yeah. Uh, so I, I changed into a hospital gowns and uh, I was thinking I'm gonna be in triage but uh, I guess midwife uh, clients patients are not being admitted to triage I don't know uh, so we went to labor and delivery room and in the video when I'm saying that we are in triage we're actually in a labor and delivery room um, so I the, the nurse came in and she said that I'm gonna um, who kept monitor for 20 minutes but I knew that 20 minutes is like 20 hours <laughs> So I was like, okay, uh, the <clears throat> everything went according to my birth plan um, nicely. Like, I don't know how else would it go. I told my midwife my birth plan, and she was fine with it. And the nurses were fine with it. I didn't want an IV in my vein. I wanted the Heplog, so they did that. They took blood tests and all that stuff. Um, and uh, the monitors, the baby's heart was not picking up on the left side. Uh, usually they say go on the left side so the baby's heart rate is picked up better. But I, I was like, can I go on my right side? And uh, she was like, you're right, the right side is better. But it was like further in my labor. Um, so I didn't, I didn't let her check like right away. Cause, uh, but in my mind I was like thinking I'm like 5 centimeters at least. Like 4 or 5 centimeters uh, dilated. But... Um, around like 12 o'clock midnight uh, she checked me and she was like you're one centimeter when she said one centimeter I was like completely crushed but uh, it didn't stop me because I knew my body's doing you know pretty good for a first timer and uh, I was like mm, okay I was expecting like bigger number but whatever and she's like that's okay Tammy you know it's fine or something and she said that um, can I stretch you while she was checking me, I was like, okay. So she stretched me while I was, she was checking when she said oh, um, you were one centimeter. It was around 12 midnight. Um, then after like uh, a couple hours, my um, contractions were getting really bad and closer together. Um, like they, sometimes they would they would sit on a monitor. They're like, here it comes. Do you feel that one? I'm like, no. <gasps> okay, yes, I feel it. I feel it. <laughs> Like they would see first and then I would feel it. It was weird because I would think that I will feel the contraction first and then they would see it on the monitor, but it was like the opposite way around. Um, so that was like <laughs> weird. And then um, I was drinking, constantly drinking uh, water like crazy. Um, they did let you drink a lot. Uh, and I was like, can I go to the bathroom? Can I go to the bathroom? Because when I was sitting on the bathroom, on the toilet, um, I was so much relieved, and I was places to hold, and I was much better. And you know, sometimes we would close the light in the bathroom, and I would be in my dark, you know, spot, and just be in myself, inside of myself, and breathe and cope with the pain better. Um, and Susan came in. She was like, um, "Tammy, you know, you can always take epidural." I was like, "No, no, 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 no. I don't want no epidural. Um, I don't want any needles going in my back. I don't want any needles. Period." <laughs> The only needle I could handle was the IV, and um, that's it. And uh, so she was like, okay. At around like uh, 
what can I say? Three o'clock. Uh, I went to the bathroom again. I was like, I need to go to the bathroom. And um, so I went to the bathroom and I didn't come out of there until like whoosh, later on. Susan's like, Tammy, we're going to be kicked out of the hospital. The nurses are not going to be, you know, tolerating this for any longer. So you have to come back on the bed. I'm like, a little longer, please, please. <laughs> and then I was like um, begging her to let me stay in her bathroom because that was like my... Um, best place because I was not on my back and any, anything like that and every time I would have a contraction I would go like this like back and uh, you know get my leg up like a birthing position and it would relieve the pain so much then um, she came and she's like can I check you I'm like okay check me and she checked me she's like she had that smile on her face she was like you're seven centimeters! And I couldn't believe what she said. I'm like, what? She said, you're seven centimeters! And then Melissa was like, yay, Tammy, you're seven centimeters! Three, ma three more to go, yay! And then um, she's like, but you really have to come to bed. I'm like, okay, in a little bit. After like 10, 15 minutes, I was like, um, I, I, um, I got through the con last contraction and I got up and I went to the bed and I got another contraction right next to the bed. And it was bad. It was like really with the pressure and just so bad, but it's not like you cannot cope with it. I mean, I have zero, zero, zero pain tolerance and I could cope with it. So it's not like really crazy bad. Um, and when that contraction came, I went down on the bed like that, like leaning over and I was like, I gotta push. I think I gotta push. And she's like, Tammy, Tammy, you have to get on the bed. I ha I need both of my hands to catch the baby. <laughs> I was like, no, 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 please don't make me go on the bed. <laughs> and then, so uh, she made me go on the bed. Uh, eventually, well, I didn't want to go on that bed because um, I was grabbing on her shoulder and her hand, and she's like, I need both of my hands, Tammy, to get the baby. So I went there and she didn't check me to see if I am completely dilated or not, but I had the urge to push. So we started pushing, but instead of opening my legs, I was like closing my legs and I had no idea how to push. Uh, I was screaming instead of pushing. Um, basically, I was doing everything wrong. I had to like get my strength and press my chin down and push, but I was like ah! screaming like a maniac. Oh, <laughs> uh, so after a couple of pushes, they're like, we see the head. It was like two, three pushes. She's like, we see the head. Um, a little more, a little more, and then I couldn't do it. I'm like, I can't do it. I'm closing my legs. She's saying, uh, hold behind your knees, and I'm not, and someone else holding, but I can't push it. I don't know. So she's like, Tammy, we're going to move you to a brighter room uh, to vacuum the baby out. And she said, brighter room? I didn't hear the rest of it and I was like freaking out she's like no 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 it's not a c-section don't worry it's not a c-section we're just gonna vacuum the baby out and um, before that the male doctor came in and he put his fingers in me and he, while I was pushing it was hurting so badly I don't know what he was doing he was trying to stretch me or something I don't know what he was doing but it hurt so bad I was like I cannot push like this uh, so they wheeled me with my bed um, to the brighter room, um, which is like kind of like operating room, but it's not operating room. And uh, they leave me there to go get their scrubs on. Uh, the next thing I know, I have a cover on. Um, next thing I know, I need to push again, and there's nobody around me, but I'm pushing. And then the nurse came in because she heard me screaming, I think, and she's like, "Wait!" I'm like, "What do you mean, wait?" And she's like, "Wait!" And she's scr screaming for my midwife. She's like, "Susan!" <laughs> and then my midwife jumps in, she's, she doesn't have no gloves, nothing on, they just manage to, you know, hold the baby with a blanket, because I pushed the whole thing out, and it was funny, on her way out, she did a, a poo on me, all over my vagina, and I, like, black meconium going on on me, um, I didn't feel like I pushed the baby out, it was weird, I didn't feel the ring of fire going on, that people say, and, um, 
so next thing I know I feel something warm on me so I grab her and put it on my stomach and then she pees all over me it was so funny and then I go I did it I did it and I go crying and I was so emotional it was the best thing ever guys you know like uh, feeling so proud of yourself that you can push the baby out and it was just so amazing I cannot describe with words you just I had to see my face in a video um, uh, the, nobody was there to record that part but um, she cried first when the camera was on and Melissa could record it it was so funny I was like skip part um, the baby being born all by myself. I pushed the baby out all by myself because I think my mind just freaked out of the vacuum <laughs> and I was like, I gotta push it out. Anyway, it was just a funny experience and uh, a lovely experience, you guys, you know, just unbelievable and I'm so, so, so happy I tried it and I, didn't do, I don't know, every time I talk about it, it's just making me so emotional because uh, a lot of people are like, after two C-sections, you know, you're so brave to try it. Um, and uh, just <laughs> amazing. <sighs> yeah, it gets me every time. And uh, it's just when she came out, I didn't care it's a boy, I didn't care if it's a girl, and I didn't care about anything. It just, I just couldn't believe that I pushed a baby out. and. I'm not broken and I'm normal and I can do it and my body can do it and it's just <sighs> okay I don't want to cry I just don't want to cry anyway um, she cried uh, when Melissa was recording and it was so cool she was like uh, Tammy you did it and everybody's like and um, my doula went home because uh, when she heard I'm one centimeter, she thought it's gonna take the whole night and to dilate. And and she came back. She's like, I can't believe I missed it. I can't believe you progressed so fast. Like, basically, like from since we were in the hospital, uh, you guys, um, from 10 o'clock till 3:52, she was born. It's just like a couple hours. I dilated completely at the hospital. A couple hours. In a couple hours amazing like I couldn't wish for the better faster amazing labor and delivery um, I did have a three de third degree tear but um, which was the worst part that they had to stitch me up and um, first uh, he did lidocaine and shots um, and it didn't work because I was feeling every single thing um, I had a cervical tear and I had a um, perineal tear and he had to stitch me up and I was not cooperating and it was like I have to you have to hold still if you want me to stitch you up and um so they gave me a morphine which I didn't want I was crying I was like I don't want morphine and it didn't work also it just made me loopy um so they they were like we're gonna call the anesthesiologist and I was like I don't want epidural I don't want any anesthesia um so they were like um well we have to stitch you up in some way and you're not cooperating so what do you want us to do? And the lady came, the anesthesiologist came in and she uh, hooked something up in my IV and I was sleeping. But I was like sleeping but I was uh, completely awake, if that makes sense at all. The drugs don't work on me that much. Um, so I was like sleeping, didn't feel any pain, but I was hearing their voices and completely aware of what's going on. After like two hours I was, they were done stitching me up. I don't know how bad I was tearing. I lost a lot of blood volume, um, like close to needing a transfusion, but thank God I didn't need one. Uh, yeah, the placenta um, delivery was funny because um, she was like, with the next cramping I want you to tell me when you have a cramping, and I was like, I don't have cramping <laughs> after the baby was born. And she's like, okay, then we, you're going to have to do a like, coughing, <coughs> something. And I did coughing and she was pulling it out gently. Um, so the placenta was born that way, <laughs> born, <laughs> delivered that way, uh, and it was like a feeling of a big bulgy hot water balloon coming out of you, that's it, didn't hurt or anything. So I talked a lot guys and uh, yeah, 
the baby was put on my chest right away, it was amazing. I started breastfeeding, but she wasn't hungry right away. Um, so it took her a couple of hours to be hungry. It was amazing. We were together for one hour, and then they took her to do the vitamin K and uh, other checkups and stuff. So she was 7 pounds, 7 ounces, 20 inches long. Was born pretty healthy, nice baby girl with hairy legs and hairy head and hairy back and hairy arms. Hairy girl! Yeah. We named her Sophia Lara. Beautiful name. Um, and Melissa got to cut, her, cut the cord while she was recording with one hand and she cut the cord with left hand. Super girl. And uh, what else? This video is extremely long, but it's the uh, my life story. So, <laughs> anyway, you guys, um, that was my labor and delivery V back two successful story, and I didn't take no epidurals, no nothing. Just that last stitching up part, uh, I had to take some drugs for the pain, but that was it. Uh, I did take Percocil. Percocil a pill uh, after the birth because I had mild crampings. The uterine contractions was not that bad. I had the uh, worst with the C-sections who were going bulging up and bulging and pain and like a volcano going on but with this one I was not I was not feeling it. So that was it. My bleeding was okay. Um, it completely stopped uh, two weeks and uh, the stitches don't hurt that much. Um, so, yeah, just the pressure in the back of my, like, uh, tailbone, and that's about it. Uh, we were discharged the next day, because we were fine, baby was fine, um, and what else? So, yeah, if you have any questions, I would love to answer it, and if there are any women out there who want to try me back, I'm more than glad to, you know, announce that it is possible, and uh, just give it a try. And you will feel the difference, it's amazing, um, just beautiful, it's just beautiful. You feel like a woman and mom, mother and uh, it's just completely different. Do I love my other kids less? No. Uh, do I feel more connection with this one? Not that much. But it's just the experience of going through, you know, labor and delivering your baby. It's completely different. I cannot describe in words. -ish. So yeah guys, um, if you want to message me personally or if you want to write in the comments below, go ahead and do it. My uh, memory card is running out so I have to say goodbye and I love you all and yeah, this video was way overdue and I'm going to post it hopefully today. Um, so yeah, love you guys. Bye.